Hi there, everybody. I'm back. Start again. Oh, no, no, no. Hi there, everybody. It's Halsey from slimandstylish.com. So sorry for the problems at the start of this video. Um, I tried to use my usual filming camera and it was really, really steamy. So hopefully this is a much better picture. I couldn't continue with it being steamy because this is quite a detail project. So I wanted you all to see the detail. I'll wait for you all to pop in. Hi, Danielle. Oh, I haven't spoken to you for ages. I hope you're okay. I've missed seeing you. Welcome to everybody else. I am sorry about the previous live feed. It's typical, isn't it? I just scheduled it onto my Facebook for the actual link um, so everyone could get the right link and it was steamy. The only thing I can think of is yesterday at the gym, my phone fell out my pocket while I was on the cross trainer and I think I might have knocked the camera. So I think it's gone really steamy. So I've had to actually switch phones. But hopefully the image is better. And we're going to be doing a 22 card one sheet wonder. So um, no, I've done one sheet wonders before. I normally do about 16. So 22 cards was a little bit of a stretch. But they're all here. And I've used the Artistry Blooms DSP. And for these ones I used um, Mango Medley and Flirty Flamingo for them. Okay, so these are all of the different styles. I'm going to talk you through how to do them. Hi again, Norma. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you found me for a second time. I hope people aren't sitting on the first one. But this is a much better picture, so... There we all go. The only problem is, is this is the camera that I used to use when I froze, so hopefully I don't freeze. But yeah, I'm going around a nice little circle here with my, uh, my 22 cards. And what's really nice and simple about them is they all use a single one inch strip of DSP. So it's really, really easy to make all of these cards. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I think it's quite simple to, to use. You've got the coordinating dies. And this is the die that I've used for today's project, this larger one. Okay, and they've all got stitches inside, so they're all really nice. And I've used that with the Wishing You Much Happiness Today and Always, because I love the font on that one, it's really nice. So what I've done previously to this video is I've actually already die cut 22 of these, so you don't have to sit through me doing it, and stamped them. The only thing I haven't done is I haven't stamped four of them because I'm going to show you very quickly what I do when I stamp for mass card making. And you probably do the same, but I thought I would show you. I just lay them all down. I have my stamp and my block. And normally this is quite a long desk, so I'll sort of stamp. There's normally about 10 that will fit lengthwise on this desk. Um, I'll pop them all out and I'll just work my way along. I don't normally pick them up and drop them in the ink pad straight after. <laughs> but yeah, I normally just do that all the way along. And it's a lot quicker than grabbing each individual one. Oh, Cindy does the same process. So yeah, that's how I do those. But I've got them all to the side. So when we get to popping the sentiments on, you won't have to sit and watch me do 22. Because I, uh, I get that is uh, going to be very time consuming. Okay. What I also have is I have 22 um, Whisper White card bases. So what I have put together for this is I've put together a little, little document and I'm hoping you can see it. And it's got some instructions on. I know you're not going to be able to see it clearly there, but I will pop this onto my blog straight after this video. So you can go on and you can see 
okay it tells you everything you need and where you need to cut okay so for the backgrounds I've got 22 of these and they are cut at 3 and 15 sixteenths of an inch and 5 and 5 eighths of an inch and the reason why they're fiddly is um, UK size that's 10 centimetres by 14.25 centimetres so that's why it looks fiddly in inches but that is the best way I can get them to fit onto my card bases as it leaves a really nice gap all the way around and my card bases are already pre-cut and pre-scored so I've got eight coastal cabana eight granny apple green and eight whisper white and that's really all you need to do to prep in advance all you need to do 22 centimeters 22 <laughs> layers and 22 card bases <laughs> But yeah, so the DSP I'm using is the Artistry Blooms DSP. It's beautiful, it really is. And it's on special offer at the moment. So if you wanted this DSP, you could get it from my store, slimandstylish.com. You go up to the header and click buy, it will take you to my shop. And on the left hand side, it will say savings. And on there, it will show you all the bundles that you can get your savings off, but also is the DSP sale. And this is 15% off at the moment. So this was the other sheet. You get 12 sheets in a pack, one of each of these designs. So no, two of each of these designs and they're double-sided. That's what I meant. And they're nice 12 by 12. And not only that, they've got no patterns on. There's no right or wrong way. When I do a one sheet wonder, if there's like a little image on there, like a Christmas tree, for instance, it makes it quite awkward because somewhere along the line, you're going to end up with the Christmas tree upside down, or at least on this, I know that whichever way I put them, it's still going to be okay. And this is the sheet I'm using today. Right. That's all the nattering done. <laughs> it's really, really simple cutting. You're cutting at one inch strips. And what I will say with this paper is to cut it this way. So you get a bit of every color on the strip color. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And for me to cut one inch, I find it better this way because I've got the majority of it anchored at the top here and I cut one inch on this side. Whereas if I did it over this side, I wouldn't have very much anchored and it risks moving the paper. So I whiz it over to this side. So how are you all while I'm chopping? How's your weekend been? One. Two. Oh, Karen's using the purple one with the white and pink dots. I'm not surprised. Karen's a purple lady. <laughs> Well, yeah, I looked earlier at which two I was going to use and obviously I picked two pink lots and I thought, you can't do two pink. They're all going to look very samey. You don't want to have 44 cards all the same colour. So um, I changed it and went for this one and then was very good because there is a little bit of Bermuda Bay in here. I was very tempted to pick up my Bermuda Bay card stock, but I use that too often. So I went for Coastal Cabana and Granny Apple Green nice and bright so you just keep cutting along this is actually easier than the other one sheet wonders I've done um because it is just inches And this is what I found out earlier, actually. This paper is bigger than it should be. No, Stampin' Up! has given us the whole strip more. So this paper... Um, actually has about a quarter of an inch more on it. it. I only noticed earlier because it kind of messed up one of my cards. It, it wasn't quite straight as it should be. 
So do notice that and on your last beat bit, do cut it down to the inch. See, it's like a quarter of an inch more. You definitely want to make sure the I'm going to apologise now for my camera. Um, I think it's doing that thing where it freezes again, but unfortunately this is the backup camera and it does that. And the other one was all blurry, so uh, I, I'm sorry. I then have my two A4 sheets of cardstock. I'm not cutting them down lengthwise or anything. I'm going to leave them the A4 length, but I'm going to cut them all at one and a quarter. And again, I'm going to cut it the same way I was the DSP working across this way. So one and a quarter inches on all of them. So let's see what we're all up to. Weekend is the same as usual, not really going out cold or anything. Oh, sorry that it's cold and rainy for you, Colleen. It is the same cold and rainy here in the UK as it is in Chicago then. Um, Aniki, lovely weekend. Her daughter and three grandchildren were it's just a, oh how lovely 88 gosh doing well oh that's why i shouldn't read comments at the same time you want it one and a quarter and i've just cut it at one inch so just ignore that keep cutting at one and a quarter What you want at the end is you want to have 12 one and a quarter strips, six from one of the colours and six from another. So I want six granny apple green ones and six um, coastal cabana ones. And you don't want to have any cut at an inch. <laughs> oh dear me. Oh, she's got no rain up in Scotland. She's been out in the garden. Do you know, we had some fun yesterday in the garden. We bought, um, now I don't exactly know what the name of it is, and I'm not really a garden person. So this is not going to be in my area of expertise at all. But we bought um, like a flamethrower, but not a flamethrower. It was um, a big metal bit with a, and you put a little canister on the end and a little flame come out the end and you could burn all the weeds from in between the patio. I don't exactly know what the name of it was called. Like I said, it's very unusual for me. I don't go in the garden, but flames made me want to go out there. Almost done on the cutting. Okay, so I should have 12 strips now and I did have some left over. Um, from the end. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Brilliant. Now what I learned earlier, and um, I might be lucky with these, you want to make sure, because there's not that much granny apple green on these sheets of DSP, you want to make sure the ones with the most granny apple green gets aligned with the granny apple green strip otherwise it's just going to look weird okay so i'm just running through that's got quite a bit that's got quite a bit those two are little bits that's got quite a bit okay so i think that works out one two three four five six one two three four five six right So if I put that that side, that's my Coastal Cabana side and this is my Granny Apple Green side. And I'm going to be using my Tombow for this so I can manoeuvre my DSP around. Okay. And you want to stick them on, but you want to do them in three different ways. Okay, so if we... 
3 and 3. The reason being is the cardstock is slightly smaller than the DSP. That's okay, there's no problem with that. You want three of each colour to have it overhanging at the end on both ends, over on that end. Okay, so I'm going to stick them down. And the easiest way I found to stick these down because of the overhang was to run the Tombow along the middle of the cardstock. And you can run straight from one end to the other end, but you don't want to go at the top because that's where your layer is going to be. Okay, so this is my one that hangs over a little bit on both ends. Okay. So hopefully you can see that hangs over just a little bit on both ends. And you want three of those. So to save time, I'm going to glue two of them and then stick down. I'm all about batch making. It makes everything so much quicker and easier. Hang that over that end. And hang that over that end. Oh, well, don't worry, Janice, I don't have a shed. <laughs> so Janice has shed that, said that some people um, store the fire things that I was using yesterday in a shed. Um, and then they set fire. I don't have a shed, so mine's in the garage. And the garage leaks so much that, trust me, <laughs> I don't think it could start fire, it's so damp. Ah, oh, for the other three, these are the ones you're gonna to want to have a flush end for, so finish completely flush, and have even more of a hangover on this side. And it might seem silly, but trust me, it's a proper design thing and it looks quite nice at the end. So you want to do that with the other three. And what we're gonna do is what we, we've done with the Granny Apple Green, we're gonna do exactly the same and mirror it with the Coastal Cabana. So in effect, whatever you have in Granny Okay, I'm going to keep them both separately because there's different techniques to do with each one. And if you're watching this and trying to create the One Sheet Wonder, I really would recommend going to my blog, which after this live I will update. So it's got the little, little handy document on. And look, I've even managed to, to draw the little boxes so you can see how it should go. And it tells you how to sort of cut. Okay, so those are the ones that are hanging over on both ends, hanging over on just one. And then I'm going to do the Coastal Cabana ones the same. My gosh, anique has got every different type of weather going on there. <laughs> Okay, you might get through quite a bit of Tombow on this project. So, you know, when you're stocking up on your 15% off paper, you might want to add a, <laughs> a little bottle of Tombow into your order. Because um, I noticed earlier, I was getting through it quite a lot, but it is best for this sort of project because if you don't get the strips where you want them, you can move them so easily with Tombow. If you did that with any of your tape runners or your double-sided sticky tape, you wouldn't be able to move it. So Tombow is definitely going to be the better option for this one. Okay. 
Okay, so those are my three that overhang on both ends. And then these three here, lost one there it is, hiding away to make me panic. These are the ones that sit flush. And if you do recreate this, which I really hope you do, um, just because it gives you 22 cards really quickly, simply, and quite cheaply actually. Um, if you do recreate it, do head over to Slim and Stylish's Crafty Hangout. It's my group on Facebook. And pop what you've made into the group. There's a little album. And it'll have all my pictures in from today of making these. So please add your one in as well so I can see what you do. I love seeing what everyone's made. At one of the on stages I went to, um, I actually got a swap from someone who had cased one of my one sheet wonders. And on the back it said cased from Slim and Stylish. And I was so happy. It's really lovely to see what other people do with, um, with your designs. So those are the ones that hang over. Okay, so the ones that are hanging over we're going to come to at the end we're going to work with the ones that have the hangover on both ends you know you can see it quite easily there there's some um, purple on both ends so those are the ones we're going to work with first and these ones here that just have the hangover on one put them to a side so you just don't get confused with them at the moment okay and i've got my card bases once i've picked them all up off the desk there we go and what I did earlier to make this easy, or I thought would make it easy, look at this. This, this I thought was genius of me. I've actually put numbers. One, two, three. So I know on my instructions which cards they relate to because I've got card one, card two. So hopefully, fingers crossed people, nothing should go wrong. <laughs> hopefully. So this is card number one. And as I said, I've done them in both of the different colours. So I'm going to grab one of the Granny Apple Greens and one of the Coastal Cabanas to start off with. And I've got my little guillotine. And what you want to do is you want to cut one and a half inches off each end. So those are the ends with the overhang on both ends, okay? So I'm going to pop it in my guillotine, one and a half inches off each end. Not the flat end now, turn it over. And whatever you do on the coastal cabana strip, you're going to want to do exactly the same on the granny apple green strip. This used all of my <laughs> layered cardstock supplies today. <laughs> You might have heard me moan, whinge, complain <laughs> about um, my massive great big guillotine at work that I use for, I can pop a whole lot of cardstock into this massive guillotine and it'll cut them all. And while we've been working at home in the pandemic, I haven't been able to use a massive great big guillotine. So I've been having to cut all my layers myself. Well, I got to the end of my ones from the guillotine in this size today so uh, yeah this project killed that so to stick this on I am just going to use my um, stamping seal for quickness and I'm going to line up using my grid paper okay the bit that overhangs so the overhang bit that's going to go at the edge of the card and I'm going to pop it like that. And I'm just going to work out where those dots are on this side. So that I can line it up exactly straight over there. Okay, so it'll look like that. And I'm going to do the same with the granny apple green one. And line 
line that up. Like that. Once you've got both of those, I pop some ribbon on here. These were the only ones that I have only put ribbons on a few um, because, to be honest, I thought they were so bright and happy they didn't really need ribbon. I have got a couple of ribbons to the side of me that we can use. So I've got some of the Coastal Cabana ribbon. I've also got some of the Crinkle Scene binding that I used on this one. The white one with metallic rim edge and also this gold twine. But I think I'm going to leave it as it is. I don't really... You don't really need the ribbon on it. This paper is so pretty that, trust me, I don't think you want to see need the ribbon. So then I'm just going to grab the sentiments off the side. Grab my dimensionals. And pop that on. Am I, um, am I breaking up quite a lot or... It is a stream okay. I'm ever so sorry if I am. Quite disappointing really because I put a lot of effort into <laughs> to trying to do this one nicely and <laughs> I don't want it to be a rubbish stream for you all. Um. There we go. Now, like I said, you can put bows on, you could put sequins on, you could put diamantes on. I'm just going to leave them. And the one that's in Coastal Cabana, I'm going to put onto a Coastal Cabana back and I'm just popping that on flat. Okay, so there's the first card done. 21 others left to go. <laughs> okay, and then this one. With... Thank you for joining. There's card number two. Um, hiya Katrina, hope you're okay. Well, it's 5.33 for Aniki, it's half past four here, roughly. So that was card one and two. The next ones are using this leftover strips here. So this was the ones we've already cut down. Okay, and I'm just going to grab my little guillotine and you want to cut this one at four inches and at four inches okay so there's one strip at four inches and there's here's the other strip at four inches and if you pop all of the um, little little pieces to the side we will find use for them I'm sure okay and like I said, whatever you do on the Coastal Cabana strip, you want to do on the Granny Apple Green strip. So we're going to do four and four again. And keep the scraps to the side. Okay, so I've got my card bases ready with this one. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to line it up and after half an inch, I'm going to pop my little strip down like that, okay, on both sides. Again, I'm using that stamping seal for quickness, but it probably would be better to use your Tombow, because then if you don't get it in the right position, you can just wiggle it. Katrina, you made my day the other day. 
So Katrina um, also does Scentsy. You can go and check her out on Facebook. Um, and she has some lovely, lovely bits and pieces on. And I'd never had a Scentsy before. And I won! <laughs> so um, she had a, uh, like a little engagement post on her um, site. And I entered it. Told her how I liked my cup of tea. And I won something! <laughs> I was really happy. So I'll give you all a review next week once it's arrived. But yeah, if you're a sensey person, go and go and give it a try. That then sits across there. The only thing you really need to watch with this one is that you don't get Granny Apple Green with a Coastal Cabana and you mix and match them both. I suppose you could do that. Be different. So this is the next card which I'm going to stick onto the granny apple green back in just there. that one and then we're going to do the same with this one actually honeybee it was really interesting because Katrina had this sort of software that made it look like um have you ever watched wheel of fortune I don't know if you have that over in the states but it had everybody's name on a big wheel and the wheel spun um so you could sort of watch it as it landed and it landed on me it was a really like little little fun thing I thought that was quite cute let's see if I can get one of those little spinning wheels so these four inches just hang over the edge of your cardstock and you can just trim them off um, but to me it was easier than cutting it at 15 sixteenths of an inch because I hate 15 sixteenths of things. <laughs> Ooh, well done, Audrey. Oh, it's Audrey's run a voucher for Body Shop. Very nice. Oh, thanks, Aniki. I, I have been prepared that as I've been nattering that I was going to put something on upside down or anything, but I'm trying to pay attention to both. And a background. And there's four of the 22 cards done. Okay. The next one. You again want the same strips which have the hangover on both ends. Again you want one of the granny apple green ones and one of the coastal cabana ones. Okay. And this one is card number three. I, love, I was so chuffed with my post-it note idea. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my two bases, and for this one, you want to cut it off at two and a half inches on each end. And when you do go back, this is all in the instructions, so you can see that card number three, you cut it at two and a half inches off on each end until my instructions go wrong. <laughs> I was typing and creating earlier together. So two and a half inches. So you've got the hangover on it and you turn it round so you still have the hangover and two and a half inches again. Oh, might as well do the granny apple green ones while I'm here. Oh, 
told you that's where my inspiration come from actually i did a one sheet wonder two years ago for christmas and um it's actually my most watched video on youtube and we were talking about it this week and i actually noticed that most of my videos you know they, they're sort of under a thousand views and that one has got thirty four thousand, i think it is and so i thought well i must have done something right people must have liked that so um that's why i thought oh i'll do another one this weekend um and decided to change it up and make it all so it was inches because quite often you just have inches of dsp left and don't know what to do with it well you could just do one of these cards so pick which one's your favorite and do that the bottom sorry i think that froze there this is an inch off the top and an inch off the bottom so i'm just going to pop this an inch up this grid paper is great because you can just count four up and you know it's an inch okay um, line it up and then for that one you just pop in the sentiment in the middle now like I said I haven't put um, ribbons and embellishments on all of these you can do you can jazz these up as much as you like, but I thought if I stopped and put ribbons and embellishments on each one, well, we'd still be here at like 10 o'clock this evening. And my idea was, is this would be nice and quick for everyone to make as quick makes. Um, so I didn't put any ribbons and embellishments on, but if you're creating it and you wanna pop any anything on or pop some sequins and some glitter on, feel free. But I also think these can just stand alone. So there's that one. Okay. Now I was putting four um, dimensionals on these. I was doing those one, two, and then three and four earlier. But actually realise they hold just as well with three and when you're doing 22 of them it might be you know prudent to perhaps just use a three okay so they're the next ones and again i've put those on the coordinating card stocks that way around <laughs> yes colleen um the in tech no um oh give me two seconds i know the name of this <laughs> tasteful textures one um in good taste i think it's called but it's in the um, tasteful textures suite that's really nice masculine and it's all woods and it would look lovely with a soft suede or an early espresso and that is also in the in that one you get 24 sheets of 12 by 12 and they're really nice that's a really good masculine dsp um i really like that one so there's my third cards okay um half inch and two inch pieces band together in front of bases because of today's card so I've got the half inch and two inch pieces banded together in box with bases. Okay. All right. Confused with that. Perhaps I'm not reading that right. Um, but yeah, Colleen, that's the, that's what I would suggest for masculine cards. Oh yeah. Or oh, world of good. That's got the foils in. Yeah. That's quite nice as well. Right then for this one. Again, you want the bits that hang off. No, you don't. Stop that. These two put back to the side. <laughs> you want these bits. So we've just cut off two and a half inches off the end of each one of these. So this one here now, if you've cut two and a half inches off, is seven inches. Correct. So you want to cut them in half at three and a half. I have instructions and I'm not following them, am I? <laughs> so. 
three and a half and three and a half. And I'm going to bleed over my cards in a minute because I've just trapped my finger in the guillotine. Silly Helen. Right. So with these ones, what I did was I popped that across the bottom, left a little gap and popped that at the top. So it is just an L. I pop that onto both of the cards. Now, I did put um, ribbon on this one because I knew I was going to be putting it onto a white card base and I knew it was white paper going onto a white card base. So I decided to give it sort of like a bit of a pop. You can feel free to to do the same. I can't put the crinkled seam binding on again unfortunately because uh, once again I used it for a project and ran out before filming so uh, <laughs> I really need to stop doing that. But instead I have this ribbon here, which is the Coastal Cabana ribbon, which I actually think is lost on the project. I don't think it contrasts enough. So I'm going to use, yeah, because the other one just didn't contrast enough for me. So what I'm doing with that is I'm just going to turn the card over. I can see through the card from where I am, where the DSP is. So I'm just going to pop a little bit on each part and run that round and this is the only card I would actually think of really putting the ribbon on um, just because it's going onto a white card base and there's not that much colour colour on there so I've just popped it around the bottom like that but if you were using perhaps not as vibrant DSP or one perhaps with a different pattern in and you thought that you needed some ribbon to lift it up, that makes sense. You could pop it onto all of them. It's up to, really up to you. So for that one. Now, if I was properly, properly batch making these, when I stamped them out, I could have popped all the dimensionals onto the back of all of them and run them across. I'd have made it a bit quicker, but um, I just don't have enough space while filming. Okay, so that one just goes there. And then if you wanted to, you could just stick a faux bow on that like I have over here. So you just make a little bow. Chop it off and stick it on with a glue dot. Oh, I'm glad I've inspired you, Cindy. i tell you what I like One Sheet Wonders for. If it's catalogue time, let's do a little big of a bigger bow. If it's catalogue time and I know I'm going to be sort of shifting out sort of 40 catalogues and I want to pop a card in there, I'll use a one sheet wonder then because um, it's a lot quicker when you're doing lots of different cards. And also if people post up on my page and say thank you for the catalogue, I kind of like them all to have the same card. So, you know, no favouritism or anything. And... I also use One Sheet Wonders at craft fairs. Um, I try and save all my cards that I make throughout the year to sell at craft fairs, but there's always you know, space in the box to be padded out with different cards. So I'll make a couple of One Sheet Wonders and pop them into the acetate card boxes and it just pads out my stall a little bit. So... That's my one sheet wonder usage.
You know what else they'd be good for? Invitations, like wedding or birthday invitations. You could just mass create them all. That would be pretty good. Okay, so there's that one. And that's going on to the white card bases. So remember at the start, I said I had eight Granny Apple Green, eight um, Coastal Cabana and six Whisper White. These are going on to the Whisper White card bases. And it's up to you. You can stick them flat or you can pop them up. It means it's white on white. I'm sticking them all flat. one and there's two next ones next one up card number five <laughs> is using the remaining two strips so these are the last two strips now that have um, an overhang on both ends Okay, so for these you want to cut off two inches at each end. Okay, and keep the middle bits. Yeah, Aniki, so you can, um, let me just cut before I, uh, <laughs> I chop it in the wrong place. <laughs> Normally as a demonstrator, you get access to, um, like a pre-order. For the annual catalogue, you don't get everything, but you do get a nicer rate and it normally does include the papers. So then you can do a nice one sheet wonder in that month before the rest of the catalogue goes live and I just pop them in with each of the catalogues. I staple them to the front and um, everyone then has a copy of the card with the catalogue for inspiration. So for this one, I'm going half an inch. So that's two of my little um, grid squares down and up. Okay, so there. there and then the granny apple green ones and I'm doing it this time previously I did it so the overhang was facing out this time I'm doing it so the overhang is facing in and I just think it gives it some really nice detail And then pop my dimensionals on the back of there. What I will do actually, um, when I do the blog post for this, and I put my little instructions that I typed out earlier on, I will take a picture of all of the card designs separately so you can see which card aligns with which number so it'll be easier then to to make it out so do to go and check my my blog probably be a bit later tonight because uh i'm gonna have tea <laughs> before i do it no let my tummy get in the way of work but you were lucky you actually got me on because um my brother's done a Sunday lunch and I could smell it before I came on live and I was very tempted to go in and become tester for the meat. <laughs> so there's that one. Do you know, actually, I did think the pinks would be my favourite. 
but I'm quite liking the blues and the greens. Okay, so that's card number five. On to card number six. So these two strips that were left, which were eight inches by an inch, I'm going to chop in half now so that they're four inches again. So this is a bit like what we did earlier. Okay, but for this one, instead of going... Um, that way we're going this way in portrait not landscape I know what I'm doing <laughs> and I've left an inch gap at the bottom and top for these ones that's an inch up um, I'm just going to turn that over because it'd be easier for me to see where my inch is And this one. Okay, and then flip that one round. Oh, I've mushed up the end of that one with my scissors. <laughs> we didn't see that. We don't know that's there. <laughs> Okay, and again, so where I said it, when you're stocking up on the 15% uh, off, off DSP for this project, and I told you to get Tombow, think about perhaps getting some dimensionals as well. There's going to be dimensional backings all over my house. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that on. And pop that on there. Okay, I'm going to go back to popping it onto the colour coordinating cardstock. So that's card number six which puts us at card number 12 so 10 more cards left to do we're over part time sorry Niki enjoy dinner see you soon so the next one um, is exactly the same design just some portraits some landscape Okay, and these are now using the strips that we popped over the other side. So these are the ones that are flush on the one end. So you want to use one green and one Coastal Cabana again. The edges of your card. And for this one, what you want to do is I'll grab my pencil so I can show you. You want to measure an inch up and an inch across and that is where your DSP is going to go. And you want to get this bit here, this corner, directly in line with that bit going up. Okay, so you only have a minimal triangle to chop off here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to use my Tombow for this because it's easier. Is I'm going to pop it on like that. As you can see it follows my line up. And Tombow is easier because then you can move this as you need to. So you can get it so it fits in directly in line. And once you've done that, you just want to chop it off. Okay. And then you're going to turn the card over and go again. It should be easier doing it this way because you've already got the angle cut out from here. Okay, and then you want to save this strip, pop it to the side. You want to grab another Coastal Cabana bit and do the exact same thing. Again, starting with the flush bit on that end. Okay. No problem, Elizabeth. Glad you're enjoying. And again, just chop that off. And you just, what you want to do is get two of each colour going with this. I'm not going to do both colours because I think you'll be able to, once you've got one, you can see how it's going. But I will show you what you end up with because you need the angle for the next card. Okay, so that one, for instance, will be the landscape one. That no, landscape and portrait. And then when you've got these two bits, you'll notice that the next card is like that. Okay, so that's why you need to keep the edges on. And just quickly, I am going to do it with the two granny apple greens because I want to feed them in correctly. Because you know, I'm awkward like that. Didn't take too long, did it? So now what I've managed to do earlier, and don't ask me how I did it, but it's not a problem if you do it. Um I managed to cut the first one differently to the second one. Yeah, I'm not even sure how I did it to be honest with you. But I'll show you what I mean. In fact, one of you clever crafty people might be able to tell me what I did wrong. Um, I got my two strips like that for that card but when I did it for the pink for some reason they were both the same direction so I don't know where I've gone wrong but if you go wrong you can have it looking either way <laughs> I don't 
don't know what I managed to do because I thought I'd done them both the same. So, um, I'm sure one of you, you lovely crafty people, will will know what I did wrong. I think it might be maybe because did I go at different angles? Maybe I went at different angles or different ways. I don't know. I did something different. Hi, Carol. How are you? Yeah, I'm on a long live today because some silly nitwit, <laughs> me, decided to do <laughs> 22 cards on my one sheet wonder. So I'm still going. Almost there, though. <laughs> so but there's my granny apple green and there's my coastal cabana. One portrait, one landscape. And my sentiments you know we're doing good when we're getting down the uh, amount of sentiments left right we're almost getting there <laughs> Oh, thank you everybody I've just noticed I've got more thumbs up through this video than I usually have thank you everyone yay Everyone's going to be doing a, a strippy one sheet wonder. <laughs> Actually, you've got to say that quite carefully, haven't you? Because uh, <laughs> you could have people logging on for all the wrong things. <laughs> all right, so there's that one. That one. And that one. Um, to try and make these look different, because I know they're very similar, what I did was I put the portrait ones onto the coloured card bases. So the Coastal Cabana onto Coastal Cabana. And then the landscape ones I popped onto the Whisper White card bases. Just to create a bit of a bit of a sense of difference in the whole whole section. And granny apple green onto granny apple green. To whisper white. The two section, they're in a section twice, so that says strip four and five. So that's where I've labelled them, and card seven and eight are the same using those strips. And then they use these bits as well. So what you want to do with these bits is you want to chop the top off. Okay, so you want to cut them at four and a half inches. Which you're going to need your big trimmer for because my little guillotine only goes to four inches. <laughs> no, I like to make things awkward. So four and a half inches. These bits here you definitely want to keep because they're going on to a later card. So don't lose those. And... I find it easier to put this one at the bottom because I've got the tail then and can see where my four and a half inches is. But I can't really show you because my table is a bit too narrow. Um, four 
four and a half inches. That didn't go all the way through. And four and a half inches. So this has actually worked out correctly. I really don't know what happened my first time round as to why I got different angles. So for these ones, on your piece of cardstock, you want to add these on at half an inch in. Done, Cindy. Yay! Cindy's having productive time. She's done 80 card bases and she oh she's doing the DSB strip cutting now. <laughs> she can have all her cards done. Bless her. So mind you saying that, doing 22 cards, we've been on just over an hour, so it's only working out two and a half minutes per card, roughly, isn't it? So as I said, I don't know why that one ended up like that. I really haven't got a clue. But if yours ends up that way, you could make it that way. If it ends up like this way, you can make it that way. I sometimes think it does it just to see, see me panic when things don't look right. <laughs> now you can chop all the way around here, but just for time, I'm going to start another... Um, pack of dimensionals but it was a, a workshop once I'm sure you probably heard me say this where someone um, finished the dimensionals and didn't use around the side and popped them in the bin I was like what are you doing you can get just as many out of the side here so uh, get double as much use out of them. So onto the coloured card bases. This one's granny apple green to go onto this one. And this one is coastal cabana to go on this one. Okay, so those are the next ones done. Not many more left to go now, just four cards left. So for this one, you want to start again on your new strips and you want to cut from the flush end. So not the bit that's hanging over, the flush end completely on both of them. And you want to cut it at five and fifth. 15 sixteenths of an inch because I like to make things really easy for you but you can always go to six inches and trim down in fact wait don't don't cut this is, this, is, this is my problem. I typed this while doing it. It is, it's not five and 16 inches. You, you want it at, oh, I knew there'd be a problem at some point. Five and five eighths of an inch. That's going to mess up my last card. Oh well. Five and five eighths of an inch it is. Karen, I hope you weren't shopping ahead <laughs> what I was saying. I'll have to change that on my um, instructions before I put it out. It's five and five 
eighths of an inch that you want it. And you want to keep the scrap at the end of this. Okay, so when you get to the end, this little bit here, you want to keep. I obviously haven't got it from my blue because I made a mistake, but you want to keep it. So then for this one, you want to run these across at a quarter of an inch up and down. first line on my grid paper. I must remember to change that picture before I put it out because we all know what I'm like. I'll end up putting it out, not changing it. And then someone will go wrong and I'll feel bad. Okay, so there's one. quarter of an inch off the bottom sentiments And then sticking those onto some white card bases. Oh, it's because I'm trying to use Seal Plus. I tried to seamlessly switch to the heavy stuff after the seal because my seal had just run out and if you push too hard on the seal plus it will pull up part of your card like that so you just want to be really light with it so if you go from one to the other there is there is a difference beware that okay and then the final two cards so that's 20 cards done the final two are using the scrap bits so you should have these two with the large overhangs on each from earlier and then you should also have this one with a large overhang from the one we've just done but as I said um, I messed it up so I'm actually going to use one of the scrap pieces from earlier um, which didn't really feature in the project um, they were just rubbishy scraps so the cards are like this and what you want to do is you want to pop them on at half inch intervals up. So I'm just going to pop a strip of seal on the back of these. Okay, so you want to go up half an inch, down half an inch. This grid paper is so like, so useful. And then just pop that one in the middle. Okay, and then the final one, half an inch down and in the middle and it's up to you really um i couldn't make my mind up whether i wanted to have them portrait like that or whether i wanted to have them landscape i actually went with portrait and i'm going to do the same again but really up to you how you decide to label those ones up 
Hiya Sue, hope you're okay. Happy Sunday to you. And then all you want to do is stick these ones onto the card bases and that is the full 22 cards, all using inch strips. So while it, it's took a little bit more time because we've done 22 cards, I actually think it's a lot easier at the start with the inch strips and I think it will really help crafting if when you've got an inch strip left of DSP you can just make one of these cards. I am um, I quite liked it and if you're thinking of trying it before the end of October don't forget there's 15% on a load of DSPs you don't just have to have this one and they're available from my store slimandstylish.com go up to the header and click buy and then when you're in the actual shop if you go onto the left hand side or oh, get that onto the right bit there's a bit that says savings and it will show you all of the stuff that's on shavings at the moment not shavings savings oh i think i need a need a cup of tea so there we go hopefully you've enjoyed it like I said, if you do make this, please do come on to uh, my Facebook group, Slim and Stylish's Crafty Hangout. Send us a picture, let us see what you've done. You're shouting wrong one, you can't hear me now, I know. <laughs> oh dear. So here, here's all the 22 cards. Hour and a half it's, it's kind of about what, three minutes a car it's not too bad really and I think I think I do actually prefer them in the blue colors than I do in the um thanks everybody for joining in I hope the stream hasn't been too annoying cutting it in and out it was lovely to see you all and I will see you next week Sunday four o'clock I'll have a think about what we can do then and if you have enjoyed the video please do give me a thumbs up and um, I will pop all the instructions over on my website later on this afternoon thanks everybody I'll see you all soon bye